so my today's topic which i'm going to teach you is biotechnology principles and processes from this chapter that subtopic is process of recombinant dna technology so in previous subtopics and previous topics uh, you, you all have learned what dna is what protein is what rna is okay so now i will be going to teach you the isolation of genetic material how the dna we are abstracting okay i am getting a genetic material i want to get a genetic material that is dna okay from a specific uh, genetic material i need to extract the dna from it so first thing what you are going to do is isolation of the genetic material okay so here in isolation of genetic material there will be a flask in the flask there will be a growth of bacteria whether whatever you want bacteria plant or a fungal so let me show you you can see here there will be a flask okay in that flask you are growing some medium in this medium whether there will be a growth of bacteria or it may be plant or it may be some fungus is it clear so if uh, in the flask there should be the breakdown of the wall if there is bacteria if there is plant if there is fungal first what we are doing to do is first we are going to break the wall of this if it is a bacteria some different enzyme is needed to break the wall of bacteria if it is plant plant is having cellulose to break the wall the plant wall that is cellulose we need cellulase is it clear so like that it is depending upon which material is in the flask and which material we are going to break it okay so now see here if the material in the flask in the flask if the material is a bacteria so what is the enzyme can you say me what is the enzyme if it is a bacteria means the enzyme is lysozyme which is the enzyme the enzyme is i will be writing here the enzyme will be lysozyme and if the material is plant cell as i said you it will be cellulase and if it is a fungal cell to break the wall of the fungal cell we will be needing an enzyme that is chitinase is it clear so depending upon the enzyme which is depending upon the uh, particle which is present in the flask we are putting some enzyme okay so taking an example of bacteria if i have taken in a uh, flask i have taken a bacteria now i am uh, providing a enzyme which can break the wall of the bacteria okay now after adding the enzyme what happened the breakdown happens so after the breakdown we are getting the things after breaking down the bacteria what all we are getting it is a ruptured form now now we are getting the dna the rna the proteins okay so all are in the ruptured form different different forms okay so now i'll show you see here just now i discussed this point so specific enzymes are used to break down the cell walls of the membranes okay so lysosome is used for bacterial cells cellulase is used for plant cell and chitinase is used for fungal cell or else chitinase also we can use it is it clear so specific enzymes to break down those these certain enzymes are added in the flask so next step what we are getting that in the flask everything is ruptured and everything is in a scattered form okay now you are getting different rna is also there dna is also there and protein is also there but you are what you need that is dna you need to extract dna from it now you cannot extract by the hand the rna the dna so then what you are going you are going to add ribonuclease if you want to separate rna you need to add ribonuclease and protein for protein you need to add protease i'll be showing i'll be writing you see this is a flask okay in the flask everything is ruptured what all are the contents of the flask now dna rna as well as protein okay so these all are the contents in the flask now now what you are going to do you are going to add 
ribonuclease for breakdown of RNA. So you are adding in this flask. So this is a flask. In this flask, you are going to add what just now I said, ribonuclease. What is ribonuclease doing here? It is going to break down RNA. Then one more thing you are going to add that is protease. First thing is ribonuclease. Second thing is protease. So when you are going to add these two things in the flask, RNA will be break down, protein will be break down. Then what will be remain? That will be DNA. After adding this, we cannot require DNA directly, okay? After adding this, then this will be going under the process of centrifugation. Next step is this flask will go under the process centrifugation. After centrifugation, you will be getting a white precipitate. That white precipitate will be of DNA. After centrifugation, again, you are going to add something that is chilled ethanol. Okay, after centrifugation, one more thing that is chilled ethanol. Chilled ethanol will be added. Then you are getting a white precipitate in the flask that is of DNA. Is it clear how you are extracting the DNA from the genetic material? From the given material, you are extracting the DNA. So what you have done, you have taken a flask and whichever enzyme, specific enzymes are uh, used in the flask to break down the cell wall or the membranes of those. So whether it may be lysosome, cellulase, chitinase, so these all are added. Then you will be getting in the ruptured form. The, it will be break down and you will be getting the RNA, the protein, the DNA. So RNA will be removed by treatment with ribonuclease. Protein will be removed by protease, okay? Then you are centrifugating it. Then after that, you are adding some chilled ethanol in them. Then you will be getting a white precipitate of DNA. Okay, now the white precipitate of DNA, you can take it out. It will be some thread like structures leaving behind. It is a purified DNA. You can take it out by a looping method. A loop is taken and you can put in the flask and by turning like this, you can see in the image how he is removing the DNA. Is it clear? Okay, I hope this is clear then. So this was all about how we are isolating the DNA, okay? Isolation of genetic material. So before moving to the next subtopic that is cutting of DNA. So here you can see our portal is giving many tips for exa exams and they are having examples and related videos. So there are many related videos regarding the subtopic. So you can go through these videos, okay? Then there are some examples. So you can see here plasmid transformation. So it is regarding the E. coli. You have transformed E. coli cell with a recombinant plasmid. So this was taken up in the subtopic number two. Okay. So ampicillin. Ampicillin. This one I will be explaining you in the later subtopic. Okay. This is an ampicillin resistant gene. That is a selective uh, what you call selective marker. Yeah, selective marker. So ampicillin gene will be attached. Whenever they are growing, ampicillin will be uh, spread on that so that if it is ampicillin resistant, I mean the bacteria will be growing there. Okay, the transmit, uh, plasmid transformation. This whole, exa this whole I will explain you in detail, okay, in later. Here one more is the gel electrophoresis, okay. This example is regarding the important points in this chapter, in this subtopic, okay? So in this subtopic, you need to uh, pre, uh, like pay more attention to these topics, that is plasmid transformation, gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis is a method to separate the DNA, okay? That is a gel that is across what we are what we are using that is made up of uh, uh, algae, red algae. So that all everything now in each sub sub topics. Now we are going to learn in detail about this. Is it clear? Then one more thing is PCR amplification. PCR amplification means copying the DNA. So that.
copy into two times number of the cycle. Okay, so you have to remember this. So I will explain. So it is also a PCR based. So colonies which represent a recombinant bacteria that have taken up by plasmid containing the inserted gene can grow on ampicillin containing plate. So this also I will be explaining you. So these are the ex uh, important examples over here. Then you can see there are some tips for exams. Okay, so uh, whatever the exam may be, whatever the exam you're going to crack, first you need to tick the what are all the important points, important concepts from those chapters. Okay, you need to write somewhere first thing. Then you need to learn about the important things which are asked in the previous exam. So previous papers, previous five years, previous 10 years papers, you must go through, which is the repeated question coming again and again. And biology is a subject which are asking you the direct questions. OK, in physics, there will be numericals and all they will be changing and all. But in biology, it is fixed. If you are studying about gel electrophoresis, you will be getting the question regarding that. Maybe the framing of the question may differ, but you need to write everything about the gel electrophoresis only. So first thing is you need to concentrate on the important examples. What is present in this portal? Is it clear? OK. So moving on to the next sub sub topic that is cutting of DNA at specific location <clears throat> that is also called fragmentation of DNA. OK, just now I said what we have got now, we have got a white precipitate thread like structure of the DNA. Now what we are going to do fragmentation of DNA that is in the flask DNA is added and then we will be adding some restriction enzyme to that. OK, so we'll move on. So cutting of DNA at specific location. So this process is involving many procedures. OK. Like we are including restriction enzymes in them. We are uh, using the agros gel electrophoresis method. OK, so many steps are there. So one by one, we will be going to each step. OK, so first thing what I have explained to you was we have got the white precipitate of DNA with us. OK, now let me show you with a diagram. So this is a flask. So whatever is the content here, I will be covering all the content using my diagrams. OK, I am drawing diagrams for each and every paragraph so that it will be a very clear for you all to understand. Is it clear? So first you just pay attention to what I am explaining. Then we will be going through the paragraphs. What is written? So same thing will be written here. I'm explaining you in more clearer form. OK, so this is a flask. We have got the DNA precipitate. You know how we got it. We have done two, three methods. We have broken down the cell walls. Then we have added. We have uh, added the particular ribonucleus protease to break the RNA protein. Then we have done centrifugation. After that, we have added chilled ethanol. Is it clear? Then we got a white precipitate of DNA, thread like structures. Then those we have removed by a looping method. So now in uh, fragmentation of DNA. So in a flask, there are DNA. OK, what is this? This is a DNA. So now we will be adding some restriction enzyme. So what is the restriction enzyme mentioned here is restriction endonuclease. So now we are going to add that what we are adding. Restriction. Endonuclease. So when we are going to add this restriction endonuclease to the flask containing DNA. So from these we should isolate the desired gene. Everything will be scattered out. OK, the DNA particles, everything is scattered. In this scattered DNA only, the gene of interest, what we call the desired gene, what we are needed. So that is present in this. Is it or not? 
we are needing uh, needed with some specific gene okay the gene of interest you can say the desired gene also you can say so we are needing that so in this gene dna only that is present so when we are adding restriction endonuclease the breakage the rupture then we are getting different different uh, fragments of dna in those different fragments of dna only we are having the desired gene which we want is it clear so next for this for desired gene what we are needing particularly for that we must go to the process that is agros gel electrophoresis okay so same thing is written here the steps you can see agros gel electrophoresis so how it is done what is this agro so i will explain you now understood so in this gene the desired gene we require is present in this okay now for the uh for needed we are needed the desired gene for that particular gene we are going under the process agarose gel electrophoresis so what is that process what we are doing so next we will see so i will be explaining you first first concentrate what i am explaining here okay separation and isolation of desired dna fragment this will be the headline okay so what we are doing we are separating as well as we are isolating the desired dna fragment so what is agarose agarose is nothing but a natural polymer okay that is a natural polymer which we are going to extract it from a seaweed agarose gel electrophoresis agarose is nothing but a polymer it is nothing but a polymer which is extracted which is extracted from what i said seaweed what is this seaweed it is nothing but red algae now it is clear agarose so agarose is a type of a liquid which we are obtaining and that liquid in two plates we are keeping then it will become gel so everything i'll explain you now so agarose gel electrophoresis how we are doing this see here this is a flask okay in this flask we are putting this plate okay and this you are having some comb like structure this is the wells what we call okay this is the wells this is a flask in this flask you can see two charges are also there okay in the flask you can see two charges the top this is the cathode that is the negative negative charge that is cathode as well as you can see positive charge that is anode this is the basic thing everyone you know it okay two charges are there so this is a comb like plate wells you call it these are the wells now you can see there are some fragments present over here okay some are large some are small okay so these are the fragments present so these are the large fragments these are the small fragments now what we are going to do we are going to add the dna in it <clears throat> so dna is added from here in the wells the dna it will go and it will settle down so here also one more thing is very important based on the size of them okay uh, here first thing you have to keep in mind is why we are doing this method okay we are doing this to get the gene of interest the desired gene what we are needed we are want that gene so for that we are going under this process is it clear 
so based on the size just now what i am saying based on the size the small ones and the la uh, light dna fragments they are moving forward okay so here they are going and settle the small ones okay here the larger dna fragments are there is it clear so this is a diagram of gel electrophoresis so here we are inserting the dna in the wells so whichever they are very light and small in size they are moving very fast okay whichever they are large they are staying to the top so top one we can find there are the large dna fragments and below which we are getting in the smaller fragments that is the what that is that is small in size is it clear okay so let me erase this first so one more thing here i need to explain is afterwards what we are going we are removing that comb like structure just now the wells the comb like structure we will be removing it from them then we are getting a gel in that we can uh, clearly it will be visible the separated dna fragments are visible okay so see here this plate the inside plate what we are getting we are removing it from the flask now now we are getting this plate in the plate you can see the fragments the dna will be visible here okay so here you can see the separated dna fragments are uh, previously first thing is we are getting a white form white precipitate dna when it is going inside we it is not clearly visible but we can see so for making it clearly visible we are staining this okay this gel type structure this is a completely a gel what we are getting the hard substance above that the well like structure or you can say the comb like structure that is removed now now what we are getting that is the gel in the gel you are getting the dna fragments larger at the top and smaller ones light weighted ones at the bottom so this gel plate you have occupied now so this gel plate you are staining it what stain you are using this gel plate you are staining so what is the stain you are using that is ethidium bromide ethidium bromide so this is the stain which you are using to stain the gel plate what you have got just now okay after staining with ethidium bromide this is the first thing then second thing is you are exposing this to the uv radiation exposing this to the uv radiation okay so we have got the gel plate we have stained with ethidium bromide then this will be exposed to the uv radiation after that what happens in the last the dna we can be clearly visible we can see clearly the dna okay how we can see at the last after the staining and after the uv radiation is like this i'll show you this is the gel okay this is the gel plate so in the gel plate you can see bright orange color bands of dna okay so these are the bright orange color bands of dna so this is the thing which we are getting now this will be having some markings over here okay so based on the markings you can see what is the desired gene or what is the gene of interest it is required so then if this one 
example you are uh, obtaining insulin if this is an insulin one based on the marking you will get to know what is insulin then what you are doing you are directly not taking it you are taking you are cutting this piece you are taking you are cutting that uh, gel and then after cutting the vector you are taking the piece and then after heating the gel will be melted and then you will be getting the desired gene or the gene of interest what you want i think i hope so this is very clear okay so at last when we are cutting the dna out of the agarose gel this is also one important point <clears throat> i'll write it here okay the dna we are cutting it from where we are cutting it from the agarose gel from the agarose gel we are cutting out the dna uh, the gene of not the uh, entire dna the gene of interest or the thing which we are needed the desired gene example i have given insulin i needed insulin so i am taking the part which where the insulin is present uh, based upon the marking i will be seeing them so higher markings will be at the top 300 bpms like that 400 500 it will be go on like that so based on which marking i have uh, got insulin i will cut that dna from the agarose gel so this method is also have one name that is elution this process is known as elution okay if they are asking a question what is elution means cutting of dna from the agarose gel cutting the desired dna from the agarose gel is called as elution i hope so this is clear okay so now we have isolated the dna from the desired thing we have got the dna precipitate dna then what we have done we have done the fragmentation of dna next okay by adding restriction endonuclease so everything we have was scattered then that we have done gel electrophoresis then after the gel electrophoresis now we have got the desired gene is it clear now i am having my desired gene now what is the next step is that is the amplification amplification is nothing but creating multiple copies of that gene or dna so how we are creating multiple copies that is very interesting okay so i hope so you all have noted down this whatever i am explaining are the important things you have to note it down okay